Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, this is Pastor Dean Padayag streaming live here in our church, Grace Outreach Church in Boxburg. Be beloved, wherever you are in the world, we would like to welcome you to our fellowship with the Word of God and with each other today. Again, thank you for being with us. You have heard the music of our brother Spo uh, Hope Well, and it's entitled Believe. And it's a powerful thing. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And because of faith, then we have a way of approaching God before the throne of His grace. And um, it's powerful because faith is not about the size of it. It's not about being big or small, but it is about who is the object of your faith. You might have a big faith, but then if that faith is given to a thing or a person, a human being, well, that faith will be meaningless. But even if your faith is small, just like the faith of Peter, but Peter gave his faith to a big Christ, to a big God, and he was able to experience great things because of that. Beloved, we are continuing with our series on our spiritual blessings in Christ. This will be the last uh, part of our series. This will be part number eight. And uh, we are praying that you are all already blessed with the word of God. Let's go to blessing number 48 in our series. We are complete in Christ. Again, we are complete in Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, And you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. The moment we are saved, the Bible says, We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. And when we have God in us, we are fully covered of everything. We don't need anything anymore. Spiritually, we are complete in God, complete in Christ. The word complete means have been made full. It is remarkable because in verse 9, we see that in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus Christ represents the fullness of God. And if you want to see God, you have to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. In John chapter 14 verses 8 through 10, Philip asked if he could see the Father. And so he was asking Christ, please show us the Father. In verse 8, the Bible says, Philip said to him, that's Jesus Christ, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And the Lord Jesus Christ answered in verse 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Jesus Christ is saying, Philip, I've been with you for a very long time. And why you are asking me that you want to see the Father? He who has seen the Father, uh, seen me, I should say, has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So if you want to see the Father, you've got to see Christ. You've got to focus on Christ. Verse 10, the Bible says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the figure, is the picture, is the person of the Godhead. You want to see God? Look at the Lord Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul testifies that 
In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead, but not only Paul, but also the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ says, in me also dwells the fullness of the Godhead. But what is the significance of this truth to the life of the believers? Well, because Jesus Christ embodies the fullness of God, and He is in us and we are in Him, that is very, very significant. Because we too have been made full or complete in Christ. You see, before we came to the Lord Jesus Christ, we were short of God's glory, isn't it? Remember Romans chapter uh, 3 verse 23? Right? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are not full of God's glory. We were short of God's glory. But praise the Lord because of the presence of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the presence of the Father. Now the fullness of the Godhead. It's in us, just like in the Lord Jesus Christ. We become the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, dwelling place of God the Son, the dwelling place of God the Father. And having the Trinity in us, that is completeness. Amen. And this fullness and completeness is not man-made. It is not a self-claim. It is not the believers who are making themselves full and complete in Christ, but it is God Himself. Through His sovereignty, He made us full and complete in Christ, lacking nothing, lacking no one. Hallelujah. All believers have been made full, complete, perfected in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a permanent standing we have before the Lord. And that is based in the presence of God in our lives. Away from Christ, just by ourselves, in ourselves, again we are short of God's glory. But with Him and in Him, we are complete. Let's go to blessing number 49. We are circumcised. And baptized by the Holy Spirit. We are circumcised, baptized, or and baptized by the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says, In Him you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. By putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. This passage says we are circumcised. But this is not referring to the physical circumcision that we have. The cutting of the flesh or the foreskin of the flesh. Like that of Abraham. Which was the sign to distinguish God's chosen nation from the wicked and licentious Gentile world. But this circumcision is spiritual, which typifies, uh, typifies the uh, cutting of the sinful flesh. It is a circumcision that identifies us in the body of Christ when he died on the cross. Beloved, at Calvary on the cross, our flesh was cut off, cut open, cut broken. Just like the body of Christ on the cross, it was broken. We also, who died with Christ, our sinful flesh was cut off, cut open, cut broken on the cross. That's circumcision. And it was not a physical act. It was spiritual in nature being identified with Christ and this act is not a sign of any covenant or any ritual but it is our identification with Christ's death isn't it that when we are believers when Christ died we died with him when his body was broken our body was broken also when his body was cut off 
our body also was cut off. That is identification. What happened to Christ happened to us. And then Colossians chapter 2 verse 12, the Bible says, Buried with Him in a baptism in which you are uh, raised with Him through faith in the working of God who raised Him from the dead. Not only that we are uh, circumcised with Christ at the cross, but we are also buried with Him. Buried with Christ. You see, Christ died. And the Bible says He was buried. When Christ was buried, we were buried with Him. And that in itself was a baptism. It is not made with water. There was no water involved during the time that Christ was buried and uh, put in the tomb. It was a dry baptism. It was a spiritual baptism that Christ experienced, that we experience also. In His death, our sins are forgiven. In Christ's burial, our sins are forgotten. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know that even our sins in the past, regardless of their wickedness and darkness, all of them are forgiven and forgotten because Christ died and he was buried. Blessing number 50. We are risen with Christ and, and our resurrection are hidden with Christ in God. You see, Jesus Christ died. He was buried. But he did not remain in the grave. The Bible says after three days he rose again. And we talked about this in the previous messages we had. That Jesus Christ is the only one. That can claim that he is the giver of life. For even he died he rose again. So many religious leaders out there. But they have one thing in common. All of them, they are dead. They are six feet below the ground. But the Jesus that we know, the Jesus that we believe, the Jesus that we trusted for our salvation, yes, He died. Yes, He was buried. But the Bible says on the third day, He rose again. And when He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, we can believe Him. We can trust Him. For He rose from the grave. And when he, he rose from the grave, the Bible says, we were risen with Him. And so you can have a changed life. It doesn't matter what was your past. I've met some people who were in prison for so many years. Their bodies were covered with tattoos because in prison they were just, you know, doing nothing much. They were enjoying painting their bodies. And for many years, they were in prison. But in prison, they met the resurrected Christ and trusted Him and believed Him for their salvation. And so their lives are transformed. And so they have a brand new life and brand new opportunity to serve the Lord. And they are saved. They are sealed. They are seated with Christ. They are declared righteous as if they have not sinned at all in their entire life. They can start all over again. One of our wedding sponsors, he is a famous celebrity, a son of a famous celebrity. And he was from prison. But in prison, again, he got saved. And now, it is so wonderful to see him preaching, you know, in the Philippines and overseas, preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and how Christ transformed him. It is so wonderful. Again, we have this resurrection with Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says, And you being dead in your trespasses, an uncircumcision of your flesh, 
he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses in his death our sins are forgiven in his burial our sins are forgotten in his resurrection we are made alive again in Christ's resurrection he shares to us his life and if you trusted him and believe in him you have risen with Christ and not just that we are alive again but the Bible says we have a brand new and eternal life. The life that we really want because heaven is a place of eternity. And to be in heaven, to live forever, we need eternal life that should match with that eternity that God has promised to those who believe. And not just that, but the Bible says we are also seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, the Bible says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now take note of the construction of the passage. It is not that we will be sitting with Christ. We are already seated with Him. Hallelujah. There's a big difference. We are not promised that one day we will be sitting with Christ. Because there is a mount of uncertainty there. But the Bible is very clear that He made us sit together in heavenly places. It means it's done deal. Right now while we are seated in our seats, and those who are watching at home or wherever you are watching right now, wherever you are seated at right now, yes, physically you are there. But spiritually speaking, you are already seated with Christ in heavenly places. That is being sure 100%. There is no gap. There is no chance of a mistake. Not only that, but Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verse 3, the Bible says, Bless be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are seated with Christ, but we are also blessed with all spiritual blessings. In its perfection and completeness. Where? In heavenly places. And this will give us comfort. You know, sometimes we look at the things that we have and we don't have much. Maybe we don't have our own house, our own car, our own, you know, fat bank accounts. But beloved, even we are devoid of material things and physical things, the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings without any lacking in its perfection and completeness, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I hope that makes you excited to go to heaven. I cannot wait to go to heaven because I want to see my place. I'm going to see and I want to have all that God has prepared for me. And so, having our position and blessings in heavenly places... Apostle Paul advises us how we ought to think and behave. When you understand that you have so much in heaven, I hope that it will change the way you think and the way you behave. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through, uh, through verse 3, the Bible says, If you then we raise with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Now that's, that's amazing. Christ is in everywhere. He is omnipresent. The verse is saying, from above where Christ is. But then the same Bible is talking about Christ is in us. And He is in the midst of us. Christ is in America right now. 
And Christ is in the Philippines. Christ is in Zimbabwe. Christ is all over the world. And everywhere at the same time. But then, the Bible says that we have to focus on the things above. Because right now, Christ is there seated at the right hand of the Father. And also, that's the place of our residence, the place of our blessings. And then it says, set your mind on things above. Our minds. You know, wherever you set your mind, there is your heart also. It's very careful. It's, it's very, let, let's be very careful because it's, it's dangerous if you are not aware where we are putting our minds. We have to set our minds on things above, not on the things on earth. You know, wherever you put your mind and your heart, whatever they are, whoever they are, they will be magnified. Meaning they will become bigger. You put your eyes, your mind, your heart on your car, on your house, on your job, or on anything. They will become magnified. They will become bigger. And sometimes bigger than Christ himself. Be careful. And sometimes even the fear, the fear that we you know, experience, there is fear and it, it is healthy to be afraid of something. We have the reason to be fearful, especially in this time. But if you magnify fear instead of faith, then you will be paralyzed in your faith. And fear will become bigger, bigger than your faith and bigger than Christ. So please be very careful. Set your minds on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Our life is hidden with Christ in God. The one in charge of keeping us safe is not us. It's not the vaccine. It is not the vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin E or whatever. You can have all the vitamins, you know, in the world. But they cannot keep your life. The Bible says our life is hidden in Christ, in God. It's, it's very important to understand that. I mentioned a number of times that Nothing will happen to us without God's permission. Amen. Without God's permission. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 talks about blessing number 51. We are delivered from God's wrath. We are delivered from God's wrath. 1 Thessalonians 1 10, the Bible says, And to wait for His Son from heaven. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Beloved, there is a time of wrath. There is a tribulation period. It's a scary event that's at upcoming after rapture. Now, first of all, we have to understand that this passage is connected with the rapture. Our blessed hope. The rapture is coming, and when the rapture is coming, that's the end of the grace dispensation. And when the rapture comes, the Lord will take us and bring us to heaven and be with Him forever and ever. And this event that Christ has prepared at the end of the dispensation of grace, this is the one that will rescue us, that will deliver us from the wrath to come because after rapture a scary event will come in will follow that is the seven years tribulation but the body of Christ will be raptured before the time will come you know these days people are so busy watching on YouTube looking for the Antichrist and they are even so scared with the vaccine because they are saying there's 666 there. And now the government is having a hard time convincing people, get a vaccine so that you will be immune from 
the COVID-19 and indeed it is scary. When you are watching too much of YouTube and watching too much of TV, they will give you all the names of the Antichrist and they keep on changing the names because uh, the, the one that will, will come passed away and they are they're saying, oh, I thought it's an, the Antichrist. And then this one is coming. Poor guys who are rich and famous, they are saying, ah, they are the Antichrist. Beloved, the Antichrist is coming. The seven years tribulation is coming. But the Bible says that they cannot come in full force until we are gone. Why? Because the Bible talks about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, God did not appoint us to wrath. God did not save us so that we will go to the tribulation or we will be part of that wrath that's coming. God save us and He will deliver us and rescue us from the wrath to come. It says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So don't worry much about the Antichrist. Don't worry much about the 666 and, and whatever that is coming during the time of tribulation. By the time that will come, we are gone. Amen. While the people that are left behind, they will feel sorry about themselves for rejecting the Messiah and the Savior. We in heaven, we are already kicking dust of gold. And then... Let's go to blessing number 52. We are given the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. If you are not saved, you receive nothing. But if you are saved and truly saved, God has given you not the spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. But how many times we fail to use them. And so we are living in fear. We are living in anger. And then we are living in stupidity. That's not the desire of God. We have to use what God has given us. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. It's very clear and it's a great reminder that we have to use the spirit of faith, of power, of love, of sound mind. You know, sometimes we are just too afraid. And we cannot blame ourselves because it's scary out there. You know, like during my birthday, January 21, we wanted to go out, you know, at least celebrate our birthday, not in our dining, you know, room, but in, in a proper restaurant with the guy singing happy birthday and, and you feel like it's your birthday. But that was the day that the infection rate reached to about 22,000. It's very scary. You don't want to be part of the number. You don't want to be part of the infected people. And in my heart, I said, okay, never mind the birthday. We'll have braai and eat at home. And I have three women or girls singing happy birthday to me. And it's fine. I had a great time. But... Sometimes, especially in this time that the infection rate is going down, I think our fear should be a little bit smaller. And we should be able to say, it's okay to go out. Well, I, you know, I just need to be careful. We just need to be very careful. And especially going to church, especially doing the ministry. And we are grateful that the religious gatherings now are being open and so allowed and so our pastors and Bible women and our ministries are continuing. Now first, Paul makes it very clear that God did not give us the spirit of timidity, being scared, being fearful, but God has given us the spirit of power. We are powerful. 
We have the spirit of power in us. I'm saying in us because it's not all about your body size and your muscle strength. Brother Spoo is more stronger than me. I never visited a gym in my, <laughs> in my life. I mean, I passed by but never been in a gym. And if we are looking at this interpretation in the physical aspect, I don't have any power. But praise the Lord, the power is not physically, but the power that comes from God. God provides power, strength, ability in order for us to accomplish what He wants us to do. Hallelujah. And we can. Second, we have to understand that God provides the spirit of love. It's not easy to love. Isn't it true? Do you find it easy to love? Maybe the ones that are loving and lovely, it's easy. The people that keep smiling, the people that keeps you giving uh, something, the people that are helping you, it's easy to love them. But how about what Christ said? Love your enemies. That's very hard. As I mentioned, sometimes there are people in this world, in this life, that it's okay to love them from a distance. Right? And they are even in our family members. Hey, we love you so much, family. But stay where you are. And I love you from there. But beloved, praise the Lord. God provides the spirit of love. And Apostle Paul sets forth an ideal standard of love for the ministry. In Ephesians 4.15, he says, Speaking the truth in love, let us grow unto him with respect to all things who is the head the Lord Jesus Christ. Third, God provides the spirit of sound mind. When you are fearful, when you are timid, when you are scared, you cannot think properly, isn't it true? But praise the Lord, God provides the spirit of sound mind or sound thinking. It means that we can have a safe decision. We can have a right choice. It's possible to make a good and godly decision because of the spirit of sound mind. Romans 12, 3, the Bible says, All believers are to think unto the end to be sound-minded. Meaning good decision, right? And it is a decision indeed that you have to make. It's important to make the right decision. Let me close with blessing number 53. We are called with a holy calling. We are called to salvation. We are called to sanctification. We are called to service. And all of these three callings, they are holy calling. And they are very important callings in our lives. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible says, God has saved us, or who has saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the time began. God called you to be saved. And as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we have a job to call people to be reconciled to Christ. That is a calling. And when people would respond to that calling, they are called for that salvation. And then once they are saved, God is calling them to service. And then God is calling them also to live godly before Him. God saved us from the penalty of sin at Calvary. God continues to save us from the power of sin each and every day in our lives. Praise the Lord that God never stopped working in us and through us. Beloved, you have to be very careful with me. God is not done with me yet. And I must be careful with you also because God is not done with you also. We are all under construction. 
But praise the Lord, someone is working out His plan and purpose in our lives. And all of these are through His grace. The Bible says the God who started a good work in you, He will continue doing it until when? Until He comes. Because when He comes, there will be a turnover ceremony. And we will have a life of perfection when the time comes. And because we are saved, we are saved uh, completely. Our spirit, our soul, our body, one day all of this will be saved. And we have a holy calling. We are called to be holy. We are called to be spiritual. We are called to be set apart unto God, not only to be saved, but also to live godly and well-pleasing before Him. Beloved, I still have so many things to share about spiritual blessings that we have in Jesus Christ. But I think uh, we have the, the, the picture of all the blessings. Not in its completeness, but you know, we have the apostles coming together. And we see the bigger picture in general. And I think it's time to end uh, our series today. But my prayer is this. That whatever we are going through in this life, we will always be reminded that we are so blessed. When you feel down and discouraged, you feel lifted up because you know that you have so much to be grateful for. And you are so blessed, not only with material blessings and physical blessings, but with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When you feel discouraged and you think like you have no hope, you have to remember that we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one and nothing can separate us from our relationship with Him. But above all, I encourage you. One of the blessings that we have while waiting for Christ is to partner with Him in reaching out the world with a wonderful message of God's grace. Beloved, the believers in the past, they were ambassadors. Apostle Paul was an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And nothing has changed. The believers today, the members of the body of Christ today, we are still ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We have a message to preach. We have a ministry to do. And I hope that we will develop that faith and courage to go out and boldly declare and preach that Christ died for our sins that he was buried and rose again and anyone that will come to him by faith will be saved beloved maybe you are watching right now in um, in far places other countries overseas but wherever you are right now I am talking to you if you are saved, I encourage you to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And I encourage you to go out and do the ministry according to the gifting of God in your life. If you can sing, sing for God's glory. If you can teach, teach for God's glory. If you can preach, if you can counsel, if you can evangelize, do the work of the ministry because you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. But right now, for some reason, if you are not saved yet, maybe you are saying, Pastor Dean, you talk about being saved. I am not saved. I don't know the day, the time. I cannot remember if I made a decision to be saved. Beloved, I'm talking to you. God loves you. That He sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins on the cross. Don't worry about what type of sins you have committed. How dark was your life? Right now, understand that Jesus Christ died for your sins. His blood was shed. And He was buried. And on the third day, He rose again. And by faith, you can be saved if you believe in that gospel. That is your personal decision. That is your personal choice. I cannot save you. I cannot make a decision to be saved for you. It is your sole decision. It is your choice to be saved. And I hope that the Lord will touch your life and will convict you 
and that will help you as you make a decision today wherever you are to be saved just say Lord right now I understand that I am a sinner but right now I want to be saved I want to trust the Lord Jesus Christ who died for my sins and he was buried and rose again and today I will make him my Savior please give me that eternal life and make me your child and when rapture comes please bring me to heaven to be with you I want to make that decision I want to make the choice and the Bible says if you do that you will be saved for we can be saved by faith let's pray dear God thank you for this morning we thank you that we can conclude our series on our spiritual blessings in Christ Father, I pray that these blessings will be a great reminder for all of us that as believers, we are saved, we are secure, we are sealed, we are seated with Christ, we are justified, we are washed, we are forgiven, we are sanctified. I mean, we have all the blessings, spiritual blessings, just being in Christ. And we pray that this reminder will ring in our ears, in our hearts, every day, not just during Sunday morning. But also, Lord, we pray for those who are not saved yet, because they have received nothing yet from you. And we want to share these blessings to them. We pray that as they listen to this series, they will be reminded that they can also have these blessings that we receive. But they have to make a choice. They have to make a decision to trust and believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of their salvation. And Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that we can share your word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen and amen.